Diablo 1 is one of my favorite ever games. Unfortunately, it has no necromancy. The HD mod, also known as Beelzebub, fixes this and a whole lot more. The mod improves the original warrior, rogue, and sorcerer classes by giving them five unique abilities each, and it also adds three new classes, the barbarian, assassin, and most importantly, the necromancer. The necromancer class has raised zombie, raised skeleton, corpse explosion, revive, and blood ritual as its five unique abilities. The mod also allows the game to run in high resolution and has improved graphics. Most notably, the lighting is much better. It also implements all the planned features that were cut from Diablo 1, like the butcher cinematic and a few other quests and secret areas that never made it to release. The mod also modernizes the Diablo 1 gameplay a bit, making it feel a bit more like Diablo 2, but it's still very much Diablo 1 at its heart. The Necromancer class looks and behaves similarly to the Sorcerer class, except it's got a blue robe rather than the red robe of the Sorcerer. For anyone who's new to Diablo 1, all the classes can do all the same stuff, but they start out with different stats and have different aptitudes in combat. For example, warriors and rogues can still learn and use magic, but their casting speed is slower. The Sorcerer can use an axe and plate mail if he wants, but his attack speed is slower. And both the warrior and sorcerer cannot use the bow as well as the brood. You really have the freedom to tailor your character to how you want it to be by distributing the attribute points how you want every time you level up. So the necromancer is like the sorcerer in that his focus is spell casting and casting spells quickly. The necromancer's unique abilities are all blood spells, so they use life instead of mana. The necromancer's minions also benefit from the vitality attribute. So you'll probably want to invest a lot of points to vitality rather than magic as you would do if you're a sorcerer. You start out with the raise zombie skill, which spawns a zombie minion from the corpse of an enemy. The zombie is on a timer of something like 8 seconds at level 1, and he doesn't follow you, but he has a lot of hit points. To be honest, the zombie minion is pretty useless in general, especially early on. The timer will kill him before the enemy does, and also ensure that he dies before being able to deal any meaningful damage. But there are situations where it can be used to divert enemies away from you. As you level up, the minion gets better. At level 24, you can get 7 of them, which last 28 seconds each. At this point, they can start to be of some use. Even so, the timer is annoying, and I only use this minion in situations where I desperately need to delay the enemy with something. The zombies are good at buying you a lot of time, which is probably their only use. At level 8 it gets better. You get the raised skeleton ability, which summons a permanent skeleton minion to your side. The skeleton minion will spawn with either two axes or a sword and shield, and he will follow you around. He is a competent warrior, especially early on, and does well in battle. A corpse is not required to summon him. At first you can only have one of these, but slowly as you level up you can get more of them. At level 24 you're able to have six skeletons. The skeletons are always effective soldiers, but as you progress deeper and deeper into the dungeon, they begin to lose their effectiveness. They'll always be capable of killing basic enemies, but in big fights or against bosses, all they will do you is buy you a little time while you deal the damage. Against boss enemies, they'll probably only buy you a handful of seconds. This is unfortunate because in Diablo 2, for example, you can invest everything into your skeletons and they'll be capable of doing 100% of the fighting for you including stuff like killing big bosses like Endariel, Duril, Mephisto, Diablo, and Bale. Even so, I'm very grateful and happy to have any minions in Diablo 1. A problem which isn't at first apparent, but becomes noticeable once you have more than a few skeletons, is that they can block you. The AI is good in that it moves out of the way when you approach, but it still happened to me where in tight quarters I've been blocked by my minions and unable to escape the enemy. This has led to some very close shaves, but I haven't died yet. At level 16 you get Corpse Explosion, which is a nice ability to have, even if I very rarely use it. It will cause an enemy corpse to explode, dealing a percentage of the creature's maximum hit points as damage. I've never been much of a Corpse Exploder, but I know it's one of the most loved abilities from Diablo 2, and I'm glad the mod has implemented it. At level 24 you get the Revive skill, which works like it does in Diablo 2. You target an enemy corpse, revive it, and you get a copy of that monster under your control for a duration. 
At level 24, the limit is one revived minion, and that minion has a 30 second timer on it. I presume that as you continue to level up, the minion limit and timer will increase, as well as the bonuses to minion damage and hit chance. The final ability is Blood Ritual, which you'll get at level 32, which boosts your life and also causes all spells to consume life instead of mana for 30 minutes. I haven't reached level 32 yet, but I can see the benefits to this. Life is a cheaper resource than mana, and if you've been investing most of your points into vitality to buff your skeletons, then you'll have a larger life pool than mana pool, which is also the case for my current character. I didn't level up my character this far because, as you all know, my interest is always in the minions. If the final skill was a minion of some kind, I'd definitely have leveled up to 32 though before making this video. So my overall opinion of this mod, and of the minions provided, is high. It's a fantastic and frankly amazing effort here. I'd never have thought that Diablo 1 could be modded to this extent, and I'd never imagined I'd be able to have an army of skeletons running around and fighting for me in Diablo 1. If I went back in time to 1997 and showed young Chip this, he'd have been over the moon. It's awesome that it implements the cut quests and areas, so we can experience the things that we'd otherwise never been able to experience, and it also makes the game run and work so much better on a modern system. It's like Diablo 1 refactored. If you've never played Diablo 1 before, this would be a great way to experience it for the first time. It works with the GOG version of Diablo 1, which is what I used, because I've long since lost the original CD. My criticism of the mod would be that a necromancer feels like a sorcerer plus minions, rather than a necromancer with some sorcery. I'd have been glad to see the mod commit the necromancer way more in the direction of blood magic. Forget mana altogether, have the blood ritual be the permanent thing, and all the spells require life by default. Also give the necromancer way more minion types. I'd like to have seen skeleton archers, golems, and even the super awesome stuff like these skeletal demon things. There's also some other things that got changed which I don't like. Elixirs of dexterity, vitality, magic and strength used to permanently increase an attribute by one when you found and consumed them. Now they only offer a temporary increase. It's the same with shrines. Shrines used to confer permanent benefits or bonuses or also permanent downsides. In the original Diablo, Shrines could be really nasty and you'd have to avoid the bad ones, otherwise suffer some very detrimental effects. But they also had the power to permanently boost your stats, which was really cool. In many ways the mod is harder than the original game, but ultimately it's easier because the monsters respawn. In the original Diablo, everything was finite. You clear a level, and the monsters of that level remain dead forever, and whatever loot you got from that is also gone forever. I remember having to abandon some characters because they'd become stuck, forever unable to progress because I'd built them incorrectly and the enemies in the next level were too powerful to defeat. I remember having to scour previously cleared levels to find stuff I'd left behind, take the town so I could get money, and sell it and get health potions or whatever. That could never happen now. If stuff is too hard, you can grind levels in easier areas and return when you're stronger and try again. This is a fantastic mod though, I'm scoring it a 7.6 out of 10 for its minion mechanics. It does okay on minion quantity, you can have quite a few, but because most of your minions are on a timer, the amount you can have active at any one time is a tad diminutive. The usefulness of the minions suffers a bit, a true minimancer build where your minions do all the work for you is infeasible. In a challenging area all your minions will do is buy you some time. The minion permanency score suffers as well, because only your skeletons are permanent minions, and the rest are on a pretty punishing timer. The caster is pretty weak and squishy, especially with the blood magic aspect, but you're also dealing all the damage as kind of a glass cannon, so I deduct a point there. I prefer to be more of a support role. Thanks for watching, I hope you'll enjoy this mod, I've got more stuff on necromancy coming soon.